Wassail! Welcome to Rune Revival. This is an impromptu video on the runic vows proper domains in modern English for Talk. First, if you're new to this channel, welcome. I wonder how you managed to find a video about runes if you don't know anything about them already. Runes are basically the original English writing system that came from the ancient Germanic writing system. Vows are sounds, number one. By runic vows, we mean the runic characters which represent those sounds. You can see them scattered all over the screen. I'm not going to waste any more time explaining these things. If you want to learn more, go watch the other videos on our channel. Okay, so by prop domain, we basically mean where those rune sounds belong on the IPA chart, as you can see on screen. By belong, we're talking there about where they were situated both from a historical context and where modern speakers would think of those sounds as generally belonging. So if we start up in the top right here, we can see ur, which most of you will know as the foot vowel. Uh, it's also used for the goose vowel, but it basically covers this top right quadrant of the IPA vowels chart. That's basically the close back vowels. Moving on from there, East covers the close front vowels by and large. Uh, this vowel in the middle here, some accents will put it in with the kit vowel, while others will put it with the foot vowel. Okay, uh, still others will put it with Ethel rather than either Ur or Is. We'll get more into the details later on though. There's no script. E here covers the mid front vowels. The rounded ones tend not to be used so much in English. Uh, they may be found in a few rarer dialects though. Uh, you'll note as well that it doesn't include this one. Uh, this is the historic sound of Ethel actually, uh, but we'll come to that later on. Ash covers the open front vowels. You'll notice well that there's an overlap on this vowel. Uh, if you have the marry Mary merger, it's probably this vowel that you're using. Not necessarily, but it's quite likely. The reason it's been included in both ellipses here is that some accents place it firmly with ash, while others place it firmly with ech. Whereas this vowel in here, there aren't really a lot of dialects that use it. Hence why it's uh, been excluded from both of these and associated more with Ethel. Uh, I'll cover more of that later on though. This vowel here has a little cross through it because it's not used in any English dialect at all, anywhere in the world. I don't believe it ever has been. If anyone can show something contrary to that, let us know in the comments. Uh, now I'm going to skip over to ORS, because ORS is a rounded back vowel. So you can see that ap apart from this one up here, which is covered by UR, it covers all of the rounded back vowels. Okay? Then between ORS and ASH, we have ARC. Hence why it covers all of these ones in the middle. And if you want to go back further historically to Elder Futhark, or more accurately, the later form of Elder Futhark that the Angles originally brought to Britain, then Ors originally covered all of these range of sounds down here. When I say originally covered, that's not really accurate because most of those sounds weren't used in English. Uh, what I'm trying to get at though, is that the sounds which broke into these different runic vowels were the ones that Ors covered. Okay, so uh, in other words, you'd have the or sound up here, as well as an a sound up down here. Okay, I don't know if I'm explaining that too well, but basically it covered everything from the thought vowel to the trap vowel. Essentially anything that wasn't already covered by one of the other runes. Indeed, uh, 
including these couple might be a bit questionable because they could have been covered by Ethel, but yeah, I, I'm not here to go into specifics. As I said, this is an unplanned video. What haven't we covered here? Um, yeah, so you probably get the idea that between Ors and Ash, Ark covers the part in the middle. Makes sense? Like, just look at the shape of them. You can probably tell that one branch got broken off from the bottom, and then the next branch got broken off, and you ended up over here. Ethel here, as I said, it originally made this vowel sound. We're using it primarily for the schwa. However, it can kind of cover all of these uh, middle sounds, if that makes sense, uh, in terms of its proper domain, as in where it really belongs. Now, note this part's important, even though I've taken seven minutes to get to it. All of these, although they have their proper domains, in different accents, they all break out of them. So, as I said before, this vowel can be in with ur. I know in at least one accent, this vowel, this vowel way over here is used for the foot vowel. Uh, what are some other good examples? Ash breaks out all over the place. Indeed, in, in some accents it breaks way out here to cover like all of S sounds and well into Ash's domain as well. Uh, on this chart it's fairly restricted. Um, just while we're on it, uh, if this unused sound was to be, well rather were to be placed with any rune, it would probably go with Ash. Well, let's talk a little bit about diphthongs. Uh, the near vowel, er, or er, however you want to say it, it is approximately equal to is sliding towards ethel. Okay? I'm using this symbol to mean sliding towards. If anyone knows what that symbol's called, tell us. Alright, so while not all accents slide the near vowel, quite a lot do, and they slide it either to somewhere in this range or somewhere close to this range. Like maybe one of these vowels or one of these vowels. Uh, Okay, that one's fairly straightforward. Ur, or our, as we're calling it in modern English full talk, it begins at one of the other vowels, but then slides towards ur. Okay? So, that's not true in all accents, but in many accents, uh, I believe it's close to half of them, uh, maybe a little bit under that. Ur, or our, uh, will begin somewhere down in this range and slide up towards Ur's proper domain up here. Sometimes it might finish up here or over here, but it's generally headed in that direction. Now there are exceptions, like I, th I think there's one accent that starts the, uh, the sound of the mouth vowel over here somewhere and then slides it down here. Uh, as in, it starts somewhere in the front mid-range and slides to the open back range. But that sort of thing is kind of unusual. As I've said before, the, the, the mouth vowel does vary quite a bit. Indeed, quite a number of accents will slide it towards one of these vowels that is represented by ors instead. This rune over here is your, just so no one's confused. Uh, what this is saying is that your is approximately equal to the sound of either is or yer, but there's another consonant that comes before it. It will slide towards that. Now, I know that's kind of being a bit ambiguous. Uh, for those of you who aren't aware, your is used for the face vowel the price vowel, the choice vowel. Uh, we're also using it in fleeing for the e e sound. I have a feeling there's another one, but I can't think of it right now. Those of you who have access to the charts can go look at that anyway. Ich, or io, however you want to say the name of it. Uh, it is approximately equal to the sound of is plus the sound of os. Okay, now remember how I said before that ors can break out of its proper domain. Indeed, all of the runes can. Many of you, especially in America, will put this vowel in ors's domain rather than in that of ark. That's just an example of how runes can break out. 
what else do we need to mention? Oh, that, that's why I mentioned it. Um, this uh, is the lot vow, okay? As in, this is the lot vow that some people conflate with the father vow. Or you may know that as the palm vow. Uh, for historical reference, uh, this rune... Okay, that rune's highly debated, as I'm sure you all know. But one of its theorized sounds was a bit more like... Io or Io, whereas this one's historic sound was more like Io or Ya. Uh, the Vikings tended to use the later one, as in the Scandinavians. Uh, whether that was used in England is a bit debatable. Uh, perhaps it was only used because of the Viking influence. Uh, as you would know if you've watched our other videos, we took the approach of metathesizing that sound in order to use it for the choice vowel, which is io said backwards. And then we uh, also drew from that using it for the other diphthongs that behave in a similar way, such as the price vowel, the face vowel, and so on. Uh, anyway, uh, I think that's about all I have to say for now. Feel free to ask any questions. Part of the reason I'm uploading this is to give you a bit of a clearer idea, or rather a clearer picture, of what the runic vowels positions look like in relation to each other. Uh, now that we've covered all 11 vowels of the Futhork, I don't think we have anything more to say. Alright, thanks for listening. Have a nice night. Mm -hmm.